Hello, this is Dr. Cal Sellers, and we're going to talk today a little bit about just dealing with acute illness and acute illness symptoms. And uh, I do want to tell you, for those of you who are interested in our current concerns, I do have a channel now on uh, Brideon where you can go and you can uh, get more of that information that's probably going to get flagged and kicked off of, of YouTube. So... Uh, we'll just skip talking about any of that here, and um, and if you just want to learn the principles and and not get into anything controversial, by all means stay here and um, and enjoy our our uh, our little video here. Um, and uh, so the whole subject of taking care of acute symptoms is long enough that it's probably going to take a few videos, and hopefully we're going to be able to get you. Uh, enough information that you can think about your situation and make certain decisions um, based on the actual symptoms you have, which is which is really the hard part for people. Uh, they don't really know what to do when the symptoms come up. So uh, we're going to try to do this somewhat logically. A uh, symptom or a, a principle number one is take care of yourself. Um, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be in perfect fitness. You don't have to be perfect weight. You don't have to be on a perfect diet. But if you really want your body to work correctly, um, eat only whole food. And every once in a while, you can have something that's processed junk. But the rule of thumb is uh, for you know 28 out of every 30 days, that gives you two free days a month, you need to eat 100% food that you could make in a cave. Uh, in other words, if some kind of special equipment or uh, chemical processing is involved, that's not for you, right? Not, not for that time. So if you take a soft drink, for example, um, on a soft drink, you're going to have uh, just chemicals. There's, there's no actual food in there, right? Uh, so that, it, you know, I sometimes wonder about people like, They'll talk to you like they care about their health. They'll even come see me as a chiropractor. And they're still drinking soft drinks. And um, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, what what result are you looking for, right? I mean, um, <clears throat> if I don't want to die on the highway, but I get in a piece of junk car with broken brakes and I drive like a maniac and don't stay in my lane and... Don't pay attention when cars are passing. Uh, that That's crazy, right? I mean, you would look at me and you go, well, why are you leaving your house thinking you want to be safe on the roads if you're doing that? Right? Uh, but people do that. And, um, and they're just consuming uh, really just chemical soup or so many chemicals. And, you know, if you go to fast food restaurants, most of the time, uh, everything, they're, 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 30 to 50 chemicals that are completely not foods in your meal, 30 to 50 chemicals. And um, those numbers are pretty old, but I doubt it's changed very much. Um, so my advice to you is uh, if you really care about being able to handle health challenges when you get sick, you get a cold, you get the flu, you get something upper, upper respiratory, uh, you get any kind of acute illness, and you want to be able to handle it, uh, make the fundamental life change. And again, two free days a month is enough to handle holidays, handle birthdays. It's enough for you to ha go out on the town and eat uh, out and eat whatever it is they serve you um, with all the chemicals that are going to be in the in the flavoring, the high fructose corn syrup, the, the um, soybean oils, the canola oils, things that you could never make in a cave. No way. And um, so you're going to get all those things, you know, you can handle that a couple, day, a couple days a month is the bottom line. Uh, so, and then in addition to that, uh, you need a high percentage raw. Uh, raw food is what prevents communicable illness, simply put, right? Um, you don't have to be a raw foodist. In fact, uh, there's uh, uh, some complex uh, matters to, to be considered when it comes to eating just raw food uh, when a person has been eating cooked food their whole life. They have all these adaptations in place. 
So it's it's complicated. It's okay to go raw, but you probably need help. You probably need a guide um, to to help you avoid common pitfalls uh, if you're going to go that way. But to eat no raw food is insane. Um, the only animals that have human diseases are the domesticated ones that we feed cooked food to, processed food to, right? Dogs and cats mostly, gerbils. Any, anything unfortunate enough to be your pet, right, is going to get human diseases. Uh, everything else, they get diseases, especially ones that, you know, like elk that we've been feeding commercial hay to. You know, they're getting GMO hay and they're getting, in any case, even if it's the best organic hay, they're still getting hay um, that's definitely not what they have been eating in nature for the entire existence of elk. And so we're seeing diseases in elk and deer um, that are that didn't used to be there. And it's because of how they're eating. But uh, they don't get human diseases. They don't, they don't have disease that they fight their entire life. That is a product of eating food that is processed and cooked to death all of the time. So if you want to change that, somebody said, and I, I think it's a good rule. I don't know if it's a perfect rule, but it's a good rule to eat 51% raw by weight, by weight. So I'll see people with this big leafy salad, right? Spinach and romaine lettuce and good healthy stuff, right? And then they'll have next to that rice and say a chicken breast. Uh, or if they're if they're vegan, maybe rice and beans, right? But if you do that by weight, right? The the lettuce, the actual raw stuff, is weighing what maybe ten percent of what the rice and beans weigh or the rice and steak weigh. So I specify by weight. Uh, so that's going to encourage you to eat things like carrots and cabbage and beets and broccoli and and Brussels sprouts and turnips and. <clears throat> uh, snow peas and sprouts and things that things that weigh something avocado uh things that have some substance to them so when that fills up your plate it's not this huge volume it's not so deceptive and uh, and it's going to help you because those kind of things will turn into sauerkraut in your gut and that's what we want we we want your gut to be slightly acidic in order for you to have a healthy brain and a healthy gut and a healthy immune system um, to have your gut not overreact to things, it has to be slightly acidic. If your gut gets alkaline, and now people are talking about, we got to alkalize, 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 but we're talking about the blood with alkalizing. And it's immediately a bigger discussion than how can we alkalize because the blood is a product of your gut right? and your liver and your kidneys uh, and your nervous system and the health of your skin and your respiration. So, by directly alkalizing the blood, it, it can't be that simple. It can't be. And it isn't. In, in real life practice, many of the things that people do to super alkalize create problems downstream because they, they haven't really addressed the fact that the body has regions that do specific things and those have to work correctly if you want your body to be well. So there's the, there's the baseline. There's the instructions. Um, obviously, we're not going to consume GMOs except for those two days a month because what's going to happen, uh, we're going to get food that doesn't exist in nature, that's chemically different from anything your body knows what to do with, and you're going to have some consequences for that. So um, so this is principle one. And I'm going to go ahead and, and shut off the video after each principle. And when I have a minute, which is not often, I'm a busy guy. I've got a busy practice. Those are my diplomas on the wall. This is my chiropractic office. And um, let me just say that, um, you know, I'll get to this as soon as I can. But um, I would like to just halt uh, after each principle that we can keep these videos fairly short and uh, give you an opportunity to just chew on one principle and we'll bring up the next principle. So we're going to aim at two free days a month, the rest of the time, 100% of our diet you can make it in a cave uh, with some level of inconvenience, but you can do it. And then 51% by weight of our diet each day, not necessarily each meal, but each day needs to be raw, uncooked, completely raw live food.